discuss about spleen. As we know, spleen is a wedge-shaped organ lying mainly in the left hypochondrium and partly in the epigastrium. It is wedge-shaped in between the fundus of the stomach and the diaphragm. The spleen is tetrahedral in shape, as you can see. So now we are holding it in the anatomical position. Okay. So this is the anatomical position. Now coming to the dimensions of the spleen. This dimension and weight of the spleen can be easily remembered by the formula 1. The width is 1 inch. Then we have 5. The 5, uh, 3, sorry, 3, the height and 5, the length. So 1, 3, 5 inches are the dimensions. Then we have 7 ounce, that is the weight of the spleen and the position of the spleen. The spleen basically lies between the 9th, 10th and the 11th rib. So as we can see, if we hold it in the anatomical position, my fingers represent the 9th, 10th and the 11th rib. Which the, with the 10th rib, that is the axis of the long axis of the spleen along which the spleen lies. Now, let us come to the uh, external features of the spleen. As we know, the spleen basically has two ends. This is the anterior end, which is also known as the lateral end. This is the posterior end, which is also known as the medial end. The anterior end, as you can see, is more like a border than an end. It is quite uh, broad. And the posterior end, as you can see, is rounded. Next, coming to the borders. The spleen basically has three borders. The superior border, the inferior border, and the intermediate border. The superior border, as you can see, has notches present on them. These notches basically represent the lobular development of the spleen. The spleen basically develops from different lobes and these lobes fuse together. So this notch, as you can see, represents its lobular development. Okay. Now coming to the surfaces. The spleen basically has two surfaces. This surface is the diaphragmatic surface. It is convex and as you can see in anatomical position, it is related to the diaphragm. And the next surface which we have is the visceral surface which has the impression of various viscera that we will discuss later. Now coming to the angles. The spleen basically has two angles. One is the angle between the superior border and the anterior end. This is known as the anterobasal angle. And between the inferior border and the anterior end, we have the posterobasal uh, angle. Okay. Now coming to the relations. Peritoneal relation first. So as we know, the spleen basically is attached to the stomach as well as to the kidney by two ligaments. By the stomach, by the gastrosplenic ligament and to the kidney by the linorenal ligament. Now, next, coming to the uh, uh, various impressions on the uh, spleen. So, as we can see, the impression above the hilum is uh, for the stomach. This is known as the gastric impression. Here, the impression below the intermediate border, in between the intermediate and inferior border, is for the left kidney. Anteriorly, we have the impression for the colic flexure. So, we have the colic impression. And just anterior to the hilum, we have the impression for the tail of the pancreas. So, now we are coming to the uh, diaphragmatic surface. The diaphragmatic surface is basically related to the diaphragm and the costodiaphragmatic recess of the pleura, the lungs and the 9th to the 11th rib. As we can see, we have already discussed this. Now, arterial supply of the spleen. As we can see here, this is the splenic artery. The splenic artery is one of the branches of the celiac trunk. The splenic artery comes along the superior border of the pancreas and then it enters the spleen along the hilum and divides into five or six branches and then supplies the spleen. The venous drainage of the spleen is basically by the splenic vein which uh, arises from the spleen, lies along the posterior surface of the pancreas and it joins along with the superior mesenteric vein to form the portal vein that enters the liver. So this was about the uh, general anatomy of the spleen.